Hello, I'm Scott. And I'm Jonathan. We work here in Shenandoah National Park as professional park rangers slash amateur astronomers. We both love the night sky, and even though we're filming this on separate green screens to maintain social distancing, we're excited to work together to introduce to you Shenandoah's night skies and beyond. We're going to be bringing you videos about the night sky in the future. So we wanted to start off by showing you how you can stargaze more easily. In future videos, we will break down specific constellations, like our first video that's in the works right now, going into the amazing history, culture, and science of the Great Orion. Shenandoah National Park has some of the most accessible dark skies this side of the Mississippi. Skyline Drive, the, the scenic roadway through the park, gives you the altitude that helps you get away from the city lights. It's well maintained, and it's close enough to so many cities that it makes the wonders of the park, including its night skies, easily accessible by millions of people from all around. Sure, there are one or two patches of darker skies in the east, but nowhere is it this easy to find a comfortable spot to kick back and enjoy the night sky. Shenandoah is a great place to take the kids out, or really anyone who wants to appreciate and learn about our place in the universe. So stay tuned till the end of this video where we'll give you our best tips on how to stargaze from Shenandoah or wherever you are to make sure that it's a good time. If at any point you have questions about the night sky, we'll be monitoring the comments, so feel free to ask away. So let's get started. So what is a constellation anyway? I like to start off with where the words come from myself. Constellation comes from Latin for group of stars. All throughout human history, and even in prehistoric times, humans have looked up in wonder to the night sky and created their own groupings of the stars. It's amazing to think about the different cultures or tribes of early humans looking up at the sky in different parts of the world. Even though they were all looking at the same groups of stars, they came up with their own unique stories about what they meant. But no matter where on Earth you observe from, the science and data you can pull from the stars is exactly the same. Around the world, as the first tenets of civilization began to spring up, like agriculture, cities, writing, star catalogs also appeared. These lists of stars, with their details, were made by Persians, Chinese, Babylonians, Mayans, Greeks, and Arab cultures. It's impossible to know where the very first catalogs came from, but the oldest star catalog surviving today comes from one of the earliest civilizations we know much about the Sumerians. The Babylonians pulled from the Sumerian catalogs to get much of their information, like the names of stars and their distance from Earth. The Babylonian catalogs show similarities to the ones later used in Greek civilization, which is where we get many of our modern names for the constellations. So from the oldest to the modern, there's a direct connection with the same information being passed from generation to generation. In 1922, the International Astronomical Union, headquartered in Paris, compiled the list of 88 constellations we use today. About half of those names come from that Greek catalog, and 12 come from the zodiac. The zodiac symbols were prominent in Babylonian astronomy, but its origins are a little uncertain. No matter where you look in the sky, you're looking at a point inside one of those 88 constellations. That's because a constellation, by today's definition, isn't just a recognizable pattern, but rather a large area of the sky surrounding that pattern. Take Orion, for example. There are the famous eight stars that make up the recognizable humanoid pattern that we call Orion the Hunter, just like the ancient Greeks did, but there are at least 306 stars visible in that patch of sky. And if we counted the ones visible further off in the distance, it would be an uncountably high number of stars. So if a constellation is the area around the pattern, what do astronomers call the pattern itself? Well, those are called asterisms, but no one will fault you for calling those famous eight stars the Orion constellation. 
You know, speaking of asterisms, you just reminded me of one of my favorite etymologies, or a history of a word. It's a really stellar example because of how words often hide right beneath our noses with these profound meanings. When we look up at night, we see a star, a star, astar, astronomy, astrology, an asteroid, an astronaut, an asterisk looks like a star. These are astronomical examples. Well, what about disaster? Wait. Disaster? Disaster. It's clear astar is our common root here. It comes from the Greek word for star, astar. And dis comes from Greek for bad. In the past, when the stars were lined up incorrectly or perhaps a shooting star flew by, it was a bad omen. The bad star or disaster signaled a coming disaster. Today, scientific consensus is that the star's alignment has no bearing on human events, despite what you might read in your zodiac fortunes. Nowadays, just like all of human history, we have a science and a culture surrounding the stars. The science is astronomy. The culture is astrology. While it's certainly entertaining to read about what zodiac sign we're compatible with or what the alignment means for your personality or fortune, Focusing our energy on the science of the stars helps us advance as a civilization. In the past, while all cultures made up unique stories about the stars, the information that science brought them was universal. People discovered that stars could help them stay on course while floating in the middle of the ocean. It gave them signals about when to plant crops or expect colder weather. Those who studied the stars gained unique tools that helped them prosper. Today, discoveries of new scientific tools are helping us to prosper just the same. We're detecting new particles never before noticed. We're learning about new kinds of fusion energy that might be able to give us unlimited energy. We utilize orbital mechanics to run the GPS satellites that are updating the location services in our phones right now. You know, in fact, your phone is a fantastic example of a scientific tool that we can use today to learn more about the stars. Search for a stargazing app on your phone and you'll find several that make stargazing easy for everyone. Many of them let you just point your phone at the sky and it will tell you exactly what you're looking at. And that gives you a deeper understanding of what those dots of light are and what they mean. Some other tips before you go out stargazing? Always check the web before going to make sure it's worth your time. You want to check for the weather, for nighttime temperatures, and to make sure that you prepare for those and bundle up. Check for cloud cover that could block your view. Check also for light pollution. You can just search for light pollution maps to find a dark place. Here in Shenandoah, Big Meadows is one of the most popular places to get a wide view of the night sky, but our overlooks also provide a great stargazing spot. It's a good idea to call ahead during winter months to make sure there's no ice on Skyline Drive and that it's open. And lastly, check to make sure that the moon is not out. You want to make sure you try going towards a new moon because the sky gets especially darker for a better view. Currently around the start of 2021, the new moon tends to be near the middle of the month and will move towards the beginning of the month throughout the rest of the year. No matter where on earth you are, you can enjoy viewing the night skies. Even in the brightest areas, there are stars that shine through. And sure, the International Astronomical Union says there's 88 constellations. But that all started from people gazing up at the sky and making up stories about the patterns that they saw. You can make your own constellations and make your own connections. Whether you use professional telescopes or amateur astronomy apps, you can learn more by simply going outside and looking up. And if you want to learn more, we will continue posting more astronomy videos in the future. Or better yet, discover for yourself inside of a national park or other dark area. All of this will help you get a good view of the stars, and that helps us understand our place in the universe. We hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit that subscribe and or like button so you don't miss our future videos. 
breaking down the Orion constellation. You can also check out our previous video where we talk about some other awesome stars and what Shenandoah National Park is doing to protect our dark skies from light pollution. And we'll see you around Shenandoah. Bye. Bye.